Modern Altars, the podcast where faith meets the pulse of today. I'm your host, Talia Mungin, and together we'll explore and navigate conversations about pop culture, beginner's theology, Christian life living, youth, and the church. Without further ado, let's jump into today's episode. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Modern Altars, and today we're going to be talking about checking the fruit. So this episode idea stems from TikTok, and it took me a while to get on TikTok originally because I saw how addictive it was for other people in my friend group, and I was like, "Mm, maybe I don't want to do that. But once I got on there, it's really a great place. It Like all social media, it is what you make it. Um, But there is a story that is going super viral right now about this lady who um, is telling the story about how her husband deceived her over time and how he was a pathological liar. And when they met, he would tell her things that just weren't true. And it just combusted into this big story of just like things that he had said, things that he did that just were not true. And um, the video is very, very viral. It's a series. There's like 50 parts to it. It's crazy. Everybody's talking about it. But the part that really piqued my interest, there is a clip of her. And she said uh, he could quote the Bible like nobody's business, but so can Lucifer. And it was funny. It was humorous, but there was so much truth to it that I ended up making a video of my own on TikTok, just uh, lip syncing it and reminding my Christian girlies to check a man's fruit. And what I was referring to was Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. And it says, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. And so I was really wanting to bring that up and to show how much of that story of, of, of what you said with, you know, somebody knowing the Bible and being able to quote it, but living a life that's so contradictory that they might as well be saying, um, that is just such an eye opening thing. Because when we look at the Bible, it warns us about these types of people. And so I was like, we have to be so ving- vigilant, excuse me, vig- vigilant. Ooh, what is that word? We have to be so cautious with the people we entertain, with the people we let into our circles, and even using um, that symbolism that's in Matthew when it says they come in in sheep's clothing, but they're wolves. All throughout the Bible, God draws this picture of his people being sheep. He's the shepherd. We are his sheep. We listen to him. We need his guidance. We need his support. We need him. But what happens when the sheep let a wolf in the back? We can literally visualize this and make this so very practical because a wolf is going to eat the sheep. A wolf is going to come in. And so if we're not careful, if we're not looking at the people we're around, if we're not looking at what we entertain the people and and vetting them when we're not vetting them we're letting in people who want to destroy us people who have our worst interest at heart people who who want to see us vulnerable and not only that but matthew chapter 21 when you go further down into matthew um we see this story about jesus and a tree And this also brings into mind ideas about fruit because it says early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. And immediately the tree withered. Now, there is a lot that I love about this passage and more that is not even completely 
on point with what I want to talk about today. But first of all, the humanity of Jesus. Can we look at that for a second? Jesus is so human that he's hungry, but he's so God that he's literally telling the disciples, if you curse this tree, it's going to die. If you speak to a mountain, it shall be removed. Like he's, he's so God. He's so man, but he's so God. And that's just absolutely crazy to me. But he's hungry and he goes to this tree with all of these leaves. And from a distance, I can imagine he sees all these leaves. He sees this tree. It's supposed to be healthy because you see the leaves. It's producing something, but it's not fruit. And the thing is, fruit is helpful. Leaves, what, what are you going to do with leaves? And so just the idea of seeing something, it should be healthy. There's leaves, but the leaves are not helpful. You're only producing the things that can't help me. So even in a sense of, of relationships, how many times do we see something and it looks good and it looks healthy and it looks like it should do something but it's not producing what we need. You have leaves, but you have no fruit. What's a fruit? When they say fruit, they're talking about works. They're, they're talking about um, fruits are the, the, the visual representations of healthiness. Fruits are the things that we produce that say we believe in God. Fruits are the things that people can see our lives and the way we live it, the things we say, the things we do, and say, hey, this person has fruits. Fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, sound mind, all of these things are fruits. But what happens when we say one thing but we're living another? What happens when there's God in the bio but there's no God in our hearts. And see, with this whole story on TikTok, this man, he could quote the Bible. He was sitting down. He was reading it. He had the word in his mind, but the word was not in his heart. How do we know? He was lying. How do we know? He was putting his wife through all types of ungodly things. And just like somebody could say something out of their mouth and it not be true, we have to be so careful that the heart posture is lining up with the words that are coming out of the mouth. Check the fruits. Check the fruits. Because we may be allowing people into our lives who market themselves as something. They market themselves as, I'm a child of God. I'm a woman of God. I'm a Proverbs 31 woman. And just for a second, can we stop there? Because I, I have no problem with somebody calling themselves a Proverbs 31 woman, but she will never catch me saying that. And here's why. First and foremost, I read that whole chapter. And as soon as I got to the part where it says she rises early in the morning, I was like, full stop, because I'm working on it. I might be working towards being a Proverbs 31 woman, but I, I'm not there yet. And, and so they're, they're having these titles, woman of God, Proverbs 31 woman, man of God, all of these things. But we better be so very careful that when we put these labels over our lives, our actions are matching what we're saying about ourselves. Because you cannot go into a room and say, I am a woman of God and treat people terrible every day. You cannot say, I am a man of God and you have deceit in your heart and you're a liar. Because it's not the truth. It's not the truth. So when we say these things, we have to be careful, especially when we interacting with unbelievers because they're hearing what we're saying and they're seeing things that contradict what God says. They're seeing things that contradict what we proclaim about ourselves. And there's a problem with that because the moment they see you do something that does not align with what you say, oh, that's church people for you. Hypocrites. All of them are hypocrites. And it builds this idea in their head that we are not who we say we are. We're not perfect. By no means are we perfect. But we do not continuously produce bad fruits. They should be able to go to somebody and say, hey, do you know so-and-so? 
Hey, do you know Talia? I would be very disturbed. I would be very sad and reflective if somebody who did not know me personally went up to somebody who knows me personally and says, what's Talia's character? And that person had continuously bad stories, bad things to share about me. Because I want to live a life that when somebody mentions my name, they say, oh, yeah, I know her. She did this. She's like this. You know, she loves God. She's devoted. She's humble. I want there to be a good report because I want my fruits to speak to me for me. I want to have fruits that show that I love God the way I say I love God, that I love people the way I say I love people. And I think a lot of the times that is the problem because we see the leaves of a person. We see how they present themselves, but we never start to dig. We never go deeper into the person. We never go closer to the tree and expect, like inspect what is actually growing. But instead, we let people in so easily. And that's not to say, hey, I'm just going to judge this person and, and see, like, mm, a false prophet. Start pointing a false prophet. Everybody start pointing at him. But there should be fruit. There shouldn't be a sense of somebody falling in the same area over and over and over and over and over and over. Oh, I'll just repent. Mm. What is your fruit saying about you? And if we go back to Matthew chapter 7, it's very interesting because um, it points to the fact that there can be bad fruit. In Matthew 27 with the fig tree, the fig tree had no fruit at all. It was just leaves. In Matthew chapter 7, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Some of us have bad fruit. And you have to inspect that even more because I can go up to a tree with bad fruit and pick it up and I won't know it's bad till I taste it. I won't know it's bad until I bite into an apple and it's mushy and it's gross. But if I took the time and I allowed God to take the lenses off my eyes to give me vision so I can see ears to hear. I can go to a bad tree, pick up a bad piece of fruit and look at it and look for signs of mold. Look for insects that are in it. Look for bruises. Look for it being busted up on the on the top side of it, the bottom side of it. Before I bite into it. Because sometimes. Things are not what they seem. Is that sad? Absolutely. Do I wish that we could take everybody at their word? Absolutely. But the interesting thing about this, these stories is that when you let the wrong people in the fold, they destroy. They eat away at the people around you. And it's not something that you can press a button and make time go back to when everything was whole. Because in that story, when she was talking about, she's still recovering. Even going back to the TikTok story, she's still recovering. It's still certain things that she's just looking at and it's trouble in her life. Things that should be behind her. She's no longer with this man. But the evidence of what she has gone through is still on her life. Because he was a wolf. 
because the fruit was bad. And so I believe that God wants us, of course, to have this loving continence to, to afford peace and grace to people, but to not be blinded, not to be blinded by them, but to allow him to bless us and to unveil who people really are to us. Because if not, we'll end up going in the same cycles. Does anybody know somebody who continuously chooses bad people to date? Every time you talk to them, he do, he do me so wrong. He's so mean. He's, he's this, he's that. Wasn't the other one just like that? Yep. We got to vet these people. We got to vet them. We got to pray and ask God to reveal the intentions of people's hearts. And we got to move forward in wisdom that the right people will find us, that they will have good fruits, and that we should reflect on our own hearts, on our own intentions, on our own actions, and ask God to reveal our own issues, our instances where we don't produce the right thing. And so that's what I wanted to share today. And before we leave, you know, I always like to pray. <sighs> pray without ceasing people. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your grace. God, I pray that you bless every listener under the sound of my voice. God, that you cover them, that you reveal to them the people around them, that you show them the heart of the people they surround themselves with. That every wolf will be stopped. That every bad fruit will be dropped. That the intentions that people have toward us that are negative would be stopped in the name of Jesus. That you would protect us and weed out everybody who is not like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to like and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. Select episodes will be available on Facebook, but stay tuned to YouTube and Spotify to stay up to date on all content. We love hearing from you. So connect with us on social media and use the hashtag Modern Alters Podcast and share your thoughts. What topics or guests would you like to see on future episodes? Let us know. And keep your eyes out for a Google form where you can share your episode ideas, ask questions, and make suggestions. Until next time, God bless.